Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's really a pleasure and it's an honor to be here to give this presentation. I'm a CTO of a startup company from the U.S. called Canaptic. We're working on digital healthcare, wearable electronics, and our focus right now is on uh, stroke rehabilitation. We're part of the G4A Accelerator at Bayer. We've been here for about three months, so uh, it's been nice to be in Berlin, but uh, it's starting to wind down. So you guys are all involved with data in some way, and you all know that data is not the same. One data is different than the other. The quality and quantity of data different is different. Just because you have a lot of data doesn't mean that you have good quality data. And of course, not all data is useful information. So part of what our company does is we use that data for healthcare purposes with something we call the detect, analyze, and apply system. We detect biological signals off of the body using smart clothing, analyze those signals, and then we apply those signals to something. It could be applied back to the body, for example, for tremor mitigation, or it could be used for other purposes. Some of it's not uh, just healthcare related. We, we fly drones with our, with our uh, collected information and, and do all kinds of interesting things. But as far as healthcare, when you're collecting all of this biometric data, it becomes very useful, and I think in the future it's going to become extremely useful for, uh, for drug discovery and for medical purposes because we're all basically human machines, right? Uh, they say that the uh, organism is an algorithm, and if you, you let that sink in and think about it, that we're all really algorithms, then you can see how in the future, not too long from now, Moore's Law, the exponential curve, and information technology is going to be starting to be applied to healthcare. And when we start to think about it that way as healthcare, uh, the utilizing the uh, exponential curve, we're going to see a very rapid increase in the uh, global health uh, system. So here you see our, our uh, simple construction of a biometric signal that we're detecting, EMG, electromyography, off of the body. We take those signals and then we analyze them. And then in this case, for stroke rehabilitation, we can actually apply back a, an amplified signal and cause involuntary muscle contractions so that a stroke victim that hasn't been able to feed himself now with our system can feed himself and go through those life skills. Okay, so I've got a glove on that detects I don't, the do you hear of this? my hand, and Kevin yeah. has a HHMI sleeve on that will involuntarily cause his muscles to contract. When I go up with my hand, he goes up with his hand. When I go down with my hand, he goes down with his hand. And this is an example of muscle movement mirroring. All right, so that's a, a simple demonstration, but it's really useful because what we're doing is we're taking biometric signals off of one body and then we're transferring those onto another body. So you can see that muscle mirroring was done from one person to the other. You can imagine this being useful for things like telemedicine, useful for remote surgery, a lot of applications fall out of the ability to detect biometric signals and then to apply signals back to the body. Some of the exciting things we're looking at is really applying smart clothing. And a lot of companies are now starting to look, look at this. So right now, we're all wearing clothing for protection from the elements and for fashion. Very soon, you're going to be wearing your clothing also to provide healthcare benefits as well. When I walk around the stage, there's gigabytes of information that my body's generating, but you can imagine Every day, none of that information is used for anything. I go to the doctor maybe once a year, get my annual checkup. He pokes me and he prods me. I might get some blood drawn, and that's it. That's my only touch point with the medical system, unless there's a catastrophe. Then I'm rushed to the ER or, or I'm brought to the doctor's office, and they try to retroactively fix what's been broken. Well, what we're going to do is start to collect proactively information off of the body and start predict when people are going to have a heart attack or when they're going to start developing diabetes or Parkinson's disease, things that are detectable from subtle indications that are being generated by your body very soon are going to be made available. You're going to basically have the doctor on your back 24-7, 365 days a year. And, and I'm not talking 10 years from now. We're talking about three to five years from now. One of the focus points we have now is in stroke rehabilitation. And the idea is uh, to look for opportunities where smart clothing can be applied immediately to start benefiting uh, the population. And stroke is the second leading cause of death. It's one of the leading causes of disability. It really touches every family. So when you think about it, stroke is one of these big problems that we have out there. Interestingly, since the turn of the century, since 2000, 
35% of stroke victims are surviving. There's 35% more people that have stroke that survive, which is wonderful, it's great. But that means that there's even more people that are living post-stroke with some form of disability. One of the problems with stroke is that still the uh, old-fashioned ways of applying physical therapy where you go to a physical therapist and he moves your body around trying to keep you limber and trying to keep some muscle tone and eventually try to rehabilitate that body so that it has some of its life skills brought back uh, will plateau. So a person after 12 months, sometimes 18 months, they've reached their level of physical therapy plateau where even more therapy isn't going to do much. There's going to be incremental advancements. One of the biggest problems for someone with upper limb paralysis from a stroke and from other uh, conditions is something called contracture because when there's a disconnect from the brain to the body, your natural position for your hand is the resting position is, is like a claw. And so what happens is your muscles begin to atrophy and contract and you end up with a very painful condition called contracture. So right now there's a lot of uh, work being done for contracture because it's such a, a prevalent condition. Most of it has to do with stretching that, that body. It's done at a physical therapist office two or three times a week. We'll actually physically move the body around, try to keep it supple, try to keep the muscle tone up. There's splints, of course, that can hold your hand in position. And there's these mechanical devices just coming online now that are really exoskeletons. And they're, they're meant to use springs and pulleys and contraptions to stretch your hand up to try to avoid that contraction. But they're just not practical. So what we're working on in, a, in our first MVP is a very simple but very effective way of using the naturally occurring electrical systems of the body so that we can prevent contracture. Very simply, when I uh, apply an electrical signal to the top of a forearm, the muscles on your forearm will cause the hand to stretch up and pivot at the wrist, and that effectively will stretch the uh, underarm uh, or, or the muscles on the arm where the contracture is formed and if you put this on to a patient, you can avoid contracture, you can, can avoid atrophy, and, and really this sleeve should be sold and given to every stroke patient that uh, before they leave the hospital. It has such a great effect. We're going to take this system further. Uh, actually, first let me explain. This is a uh, stroke patient who, after 18 months of rehabilitation, had a serious case of this contracture. He was basically arm formed in a claw. He had another condition called spasticity. Spasticity is, is where these involuntary movements are, are being caused because there's no brain-body connection anymore. So they're giving him Botox treatments. You can imagine this poor guy is not only paralyzed, but now they're even paralyzing him more with once a month injections of Botox. Even with that condition, even with that severe paralysis, when we put our sleeve onto this patient, we get that automatic involuntary muscle contraction, stretches the contracture, Again, this is why this should be on, on everybody, every, all, all stroke patients. Now we're going to take this further with that same contracture sleeve. We are using a virtual reality system to simultaneously apply haptic visual and audio cues to the processing centers of the brain in combination and in synchronization with those involuntary muscle contractions. When you do that, you prompt what's called neuroplasticity, the rewiring of the brain. And it's very important, of course, you can see how that could be applied for stroke rehabilitation. But as important, secondary stroke is what kills a patient. You survive your first stroke, but now you've got a weak and damaged brain. And if you don't build back resiliency, a second stroke will typically kill the patient. With our system, we lay down new neuronal pathways. We build back resiliency. We fortify the brain against damage from the secondary stroke. And hopefully, we're going to save lives. So that's my talk, but I also want to just say that this is an amazing time that we are all living now. We're at this transition point, just like the flip phone went to an iPhone. There was this exponential curve, and I think if we step back, we'd realize that we are really at the inflection point of the exponential curve. And what we're going to see, if we can really make humanity first, you know, put humanity first and, and apply science and technology to these different applications, we're going to see amazing changes in the world for the positive. Thank you very much.